Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about serverless compute in Databricks. Now, what exactly this serverless compute means? This simply means that now you don't have to worry about configuring your clusters to run your jobs or notebooks or DLT pipelines and even SQL warehouses. Databricks will take care of all of this complexity and will manage your cluster according to your requirement. The only thing that you need to do is you just have to enable serverless, attach it in the notebook or the job that you want to run and just run it. Databricks will automatically manage the cluster behind and it would intelligently scale up and scale down your cluster as per the requirement. Now, in order to use serverless, if it is not enabled by default, then we have to enable it from the account console that we are going to see today. Again, along with serverless, there comes a small change in the architecture of Databricks. So first we are going to see the architecture of Databricks and then we are going to enable the serverless compute for our Azure Databricks environment. Now, if you remember our previous video where we created an Express Edition Databricks workspace, this is by default a serverless workspace. You have serverless enabled for notebooks, pipelines, SQL warehouses and jobs already. Okay. In this case, you don't need to enable anything. You can just go ahead and use serverless here. But for our Azure Databricks, it is not enabled and we are going to enable it today. Now, before we enable serverless, let's go ahead and see the change in the architecture that comes with serverless. Okay, if you remember the high level architecture of Databricks, we know that it is divided into two parts. The first part is data plane. So let me just select this. This is our data plane. Okay, and the second part is control plane. So this is our control plane. Now, you already know the difference between data plane and control plane. We have already discussed this in length in our previous video. If you have not seen that, go ahead and watch that video first. Now, with serverless comes a small change. In this change, the serverless compute plane lies in your control plane. So if you can see, the serverless is right here. Okay, it connects with your data in order to process it. But our classic compute plane lies in your data plane. So this is where your classic compute plane lies. What I mean by classic compute plane, it simply means your all-purpose computes or the job computes that you configure in order to process your data. Okay. Now, with serverless compute plane, what Databricks tries to do is it has a huge fleet of VMs or computes already running Okay, in order to process your data. As soon as you select serverless, it takes a few seconds in order to attach a cluster to your job or to your notebook in order to run it. Okay. And Databricks intelligently manages all of the cluster sizes, scaling up and scaling down as per your requirement. And it tries to put the compute plane in the same region as that of your Databricks workspace. Okay, so in our case, our Databricks workspace is in central India. So if we select serverless, it will spin up a compute plane in the Databricks account in central India so that it lies near to our Databricks workspace. Again, Databricks create a huge level of isolation and secure environment for your data. So if a VM that has been used to process your data, that VM will no longer be used to process any other customer's data. So that VM will be completely removed and a new VM would be spinned up in order to use it for a different customer. And again, there is a network level isolation maintained in order to secure your data. Okay. So now you understand what is the difference between a classic compute plane and what is the difference between a serverless compute plane. Before we can enable serverless compute, it is important to know whether serverless compute is available for your reason or not. Okay. In order to check that, you can go to this website and if you scroll down, you can find features with limited region availability. Okay. You can just go ahead and click on this. And if you scroll down, this is where it says serverless availability. Okay. If I scroll down, it is available for central India. Okay. And our database workspace is in central India. So if I enable serverless for my Databricks workspace, it would work. But suppose my Databricks workspace would have been in South India. So if I scroll down here, if you see serverless is not available for South India. So even if I enable the serverless feature for my workspace, which is in South India, you will not be able to see serverless option available for you. Okay. So it is important to know whether serverless is enabled for your reason or not before enabling serverless. Okay. Now, if serverless is not by default enabled for your workspaces, in order to enable it, you first need to go to account console as account admin. Once you are inside the account console, you just need to go to settings and then to feature enablement. And once you are here, you can see an option serverless compute for workflows, notebooks and data light tables. If you can see it is disabled for my Azure Databricks right now. So what I'll do is I'll enable this. Now it says it is enabled. Okay. Now, to verify, I need to log in into one of the workspace. So I'll quickly go to my Azure Databricks dev workspace. 
great now i am logged in in my azure databix workspace now before we can go ahead and use serverless it is important to track the cost for serverless okay and in order to track the cost for serverless we need to create a budget policy okay so for that we will quickly go to settings so i'll click on the icon button here i'll go to settings and i'll go to compute okay and now if i scroll down you can see budget policies here so the budget policies would help you to tag different type of costs that are incurred in serverless so in order to create a budget policy i'll just click on this manage button here and i'll click on create okay i'll give the name as demo budget okay and now i need to add a tag so i'll just click on add tag and i'll give the name of the tag as demo dp which is for budget policy okay and i'll just click on create our budget policy is created with a tag demo bp okay now we can tag this to our serverless compute in order to find out the cost for different queries okay now before the users can tag this they need the permission in order to use this so for that you need to go to permissions tab and now if you see i'm logged in with ease data user and it has created that budget policy so it is manager now in order to use this policy we need to provide user permission as well so i'll just click on this three dots and i'll click on edit and from the drop down i'll also select user and i'll click on save okay now if you want other users to use this budget policy as well so you have to provide them the permission of this budget policy user great now that our budget policy is in place let's go ahead and create our first notebook and we are going to use serverless to run that notebook now i have already created a new notebook with the name serverless okay now if you see the type here is python one important point to note here is as of today serverless only supports two languages one is python and one is sql okay so in future there might be support for different languages but right now only python and sql are supported now in order to connect serverless compute you just need to click on this connect here and now you see an option here serverless just click on this and you can see here it says starting and within second it says connected okay now you know the speed in which this vm is created and if you remember the classic compute used to take few minutes in order to start up since databricks already have vms up and running so it does not take more than few seconds in order to start okay and that is one of the advantage of using serverless you don't have to wait for the compute to be up and running again there is one more advantage now you don't have to incur any vm cost on your cloud account okay because you only pay a dbu charge to databricks in order to use serverless and that dbu charge includes everything along with the infrastructure that databricks uses in order to provide you serverless okay so there is only one single cost in order to use serverless now okay so if i click on this connected here if i click on this serverless you can see few options let me click on configuration and now you can see we have memory now this memory is for the repl memory for python which is used to run this notebook this is not for your spark session okay so there are two type of memory if you are having a small notebook you can go ahead and use the standard one if your notebook is quite huge and big you can go ahead and use the high memory one okay i'll let it be standard now the next thing that you see is the budget policy so we have already tagged this to demo budget now if i run any query we can use this tag in order to find out the cost incurred in dbu okay now there are different environments here you can go ahead and select one and two but i'll let it be two for now okay even you can pass in an environment as per your requirement now since it supports python you can go ahead and install pip libraries here okay even you can see the install libraries from here now in order to see the logs you can go ahead and click the pip logs and if you want to see the cluster log you can just go ahead and click on this connected go to serverless and click on logs it is going to show you all of the logs that is available for this serverless compute okay let me quickly go back to notebook great now that we are connected to this let me just close this on the right hand side great now that we are connected with the serverless let's go ahead and run a demo query since the language is python i'm going to run the spark range function so what i'll do is i'll just write spark dot range of 100 and i'll do a display here okay and let me just run this great now you can see the output even you can see the performance here that comes with serverless okay if you click on this you can go ahead and see the query profile okay these are some of the benefits that are available with serverless so i'll just close this for now we are going to cover query profile when we talk about sql warehouses for now i just close that okay now you can even run sql queries for example let's run a sql query here what i'll do is i'll put a percentage sql here and i'll run select star from 
range of 100 okay let me just run this great you can see the result here even the sql queries run fine with serverless okay so now you understand how serverless works with notebook let's go ahead and see for jobs so i'll quickly click on this workflow here so i'm just going to select the existing workflow that we created previously so i'm going to select this process emp data by department and now if i scroll on the right hand side you can see it uses ease data cluster so if you remember this was the job that we created and it uses an all-purpose compute that we have created okay let's just use serverless now so what i'll do is i'll click on this swap and i'm going to change it to serverless okay i'll click on this update as soon as i do that all of the tasks would now use serverless so if i click on this set day if i scroll down you can see now it uses serverless okay so if i scroll up here now you see an option here to add budget policy so i'll just click on add policy i'll select the budget policy that we created which is demo budget i'll click on save okay and now if i trigger this job it is going to use serverless compute rather than all-purpose compute okay and even you can track the cost using demo bp budget policy okay now you understand how you can use it for jobs even you can use it for dlt pipelines so if i go back to workflow if i go to pipelines we have this pipeline right dlt introduction if i click on this if i go to the settings here okay now if you see a serverless option available if i check this this pipeline is now going to use serverless okay and serverless comes with a lot of benefits for example for a materialized view you can go ahead and incrementally refresh materialized view with serverless okay so serverless gives you a lot of benefits in databricks and you can go ahead and use serverless for notebooks jobs dlt pipeline etc okay but it comes with some limitations that you can go ahead and see in the databricks website now serverless computes also auto terminate if it is ideal for a few minutes okay now if you want to terminate this just go back to workspace go to the notebook that we created so i'll just go to the notebook that we created which is serverless okay so if you see it is still connected you can just go ahead and click on this select this and click on terminate again serverless is also pay as you go it simply means as much as you use serverless you will be built only for that amount of time okay so today we discussed a lot of stuff about serverless we have seen how serverless can be enabled what is the difference in the architecture with serverless compute plane how you can use serverless for notebooks job and dlt pipeline in our next video we are going to talk about databricks sql warehouses and db sql till then keep learning keep growing and keep sharing